Hello and welcome to the Kate Sandra introduction. To start out, what is Kate Sandra? Well, Kate Sandra is a production ready cloud native Apache Cassandra distribution running on Kubernetes that's multi cluster aware. But really, what does that all mean? So, at its core, we take Kubernetes. This is where we deploy our resources, our pods, physical uh, persistent volumes, what have you. On top of that, we have Apache Cassandra, which is a distributed, highly available database uh, that is designed to run across multiple data centers all over the world. And it's been used successfully at places like Netflix and Apple to scale to petabytes of information. From there, we layer in Stargate, which is a collection of APIs that use Cassandra as a backend. So you can use this to speak REST, GraphQL, or even document formats uh, for your application and store that information inside of Apache Cassandra. Next, we use Prometheus to expose metrics uh, for all the components within our stack. And then finally, we have Reaper and Medusa, which are Cassandra specific. They provide backup and restore, as well as repair services. So let's see how it works. In our architecture, we're gonna talk about a control plane cluster. This control plane cluster is where we talk with kubectl and describe the Kate Sander clusters that we wanna deploy. Now the control plane cluster is actually deploying onto separate data plane clusters. It could deploy to itself, but in this architecture, we're gonna separate our data plane uh, from our control plane. You'll note that each of these data planes are running inside of separate regions. Uh, we're using the GCP region names here. Uh, so we have our control plane in Europe North 1, and then our data planes in Europe West 2 and Europe West 3. From here, we're going to spin up the control plane. So we're just going to use Helm to do this installation. We're going to specify our chart name, the release name, and what have you. This creates the namespace, uh, installs our operator, and finally it configures some certificates and webhooks. It's worth noting that we have a dependency on Cert Manager here. It just makes all the TLS bits a lot easier. Next, we configure the data planes. So for each data plane, we're going to run this helm install command, and it's going to create the namespace, install the operator, configure the certificates and webhooks, and finally generate some access credentials. And it knows to do this because we're setting the control plane equals to false. So we're saying, hey, Kate Sander operator, in this environment, you are going to be receiving your Kate Sander clusters from somewhere else, and it's your job to realize part of that Kate Sander cluster uh, inside of your, your, your local cluster infrastructure. Next, we need to configure access for the control plane uh, to reach out and talk to the data planes. Uh, so those client credentials that were, these access credentials that were created in the previous step, we're going to retrieve those credentials, generate a cube config, and store it in the control plane as a secret, and we'll create something called a client config uh, that maps those cube config secrets into uh, actual clients, Kubernetes clients that we will then uh, utilize from the control plane server. And with that done, we now have secure connectivity between the operator running in the control plane and the Kubernetes API servers running within the data planes. So let's take a look at what it takes to create a Kate Sander cluster. We're gonna create a custom resource called a Kate Sander cluster, where we specify the version, the Cassandra data centers, which in our language are our data plane clusters, any configuration overrides, and then finally we just deploy this. Let's see what this looks like. So from our workstation, we're going to do a kubectl apply and push uh, that Kate Sander cluster object to our control plane cluster. Our control plane cluster is gonna say, hey, I need to start bootstrapping this Kate Sander cluster. So it's going to start with the data center in data plane zero. It will start uh, create the object inside of the data plane zero Kubernetes API. The local operator will then start bootstrapping actual pods, uh, persistent volumes, what have you, and reporting that status back up to the control plane. When it's done, the control plane will then bootstrap the second data center, in this case, data plane one, monitor the status, wait for it to be complete. And during this time, you don't have to switch context to talk to these, these data plane clusters. You just communicate with the control plane cluster to get the status of redeployment, if there are any errors. But ultimately, when it's all said and done, you have a multi-region, multi-data center, multi-Kubernetes cluster Apache Cassandra cluster that's highly available and fault tolerant at the regional level, which is pretty amazing. So with all that being said, try it out and Helm install Kate Sandra. You can visit us at katesandra.io, go to at Kate Sandra on Twitter, or github.com slash Kate Sandra. Thanks so much.